sustainability and welfare. Um, in a perfect world, all the humanity should live in welfare and should live in a sustainable way. But in fact, it's not a perfect world. Many of us, many of the people live in poverty. Many of us live in hunger. And yet we, live, we use much more resources than we have. And I'm very happy that I'm not the first one who mentioned it. We don't have more than one Earth. And uh, this is a, a huge contradiction that uh, we, we, more, we use more than we have, and many of us can, cannot uh, get that they need. And uh, I think this is, this is the real challenge that we have to handle. And um, 10 years ago, we at the WWF um, decided to start a new pilot program to, to make new innovative projects that, uh, that make unusual partnerships. Uh, partnerships that are different from, uh, from normal partnerships. The, the goal was to make sustainable projects, but we know that this world is a material world and you cannot buy bread, milk and other things from sustainability and you cannot eat sustainability. So we decided to create projects that can make profit and can be sustainable in the same time. This, um, here you can see what is the, what is the, the, the system that we, we, we take a social program, an economical problem, an environmental program, problem, and we, we try to solve them in the same time, with the same project. We try to find a joint solution, and we, we try to find a project that has many benefits to, 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 to spend the money as, more, as much effective as we can. And um, we made this project in uh, several countries in Europe. Um, we made several uh, pilot projects in the Netherlands, in, um, in uh, Spain, also here in Romania. And we made it in Hungary. And I would like to tell you some words about the Hungarian project. Tisatarian, it's a small village in the northern part of the Great Hungarian Plain. It's a, it's a small town by the river Tisza with 2,000 inhabitants with low education level, with many poor people, with no jobs, with no commerce, with no, with no, with no any jobs. So this, this, this is a village with no future. And we decided to, to find out something to help them. And as an addition to the social and economic problems, there are environmental problems as well here. Tisatarian is just near to the, to the Tisa floodplain. Flood plain. And the floodplain is uh, re in very damaged um, situation because bushweed, which is uh, it's called Amorpha in Romanian, as I know well, um, is an invasive plant. It's from America. And uh, it's spreading really fast, growing really fast, make a big, un unpassable bush, and leave no place for the local, the native environment. And, uh, and it's not just an environmental problem, but it's a safety problem, because, because the big bush, the, the river floods, Cannot, uh, the when the river is flooding, the water cannot flow easily, and it's uh, rising the water level. So we decided to, to, to find out something that how can we manage this problem. Let's see the solution. I think there are many solutions for every problem. I would like to tell you a little bit about my idea, our idea. Is a little map. This is this is the the village Tisatarian. Here flows the Tisa River. This is the dike, the dike of the the river, 
And here's the flood plan. Here's a, an old curve of the river, which was cut it off when we regulated the Tissa in the 150 years ago. And this is the flood plan, which is, as I said, told you, it's full of uh, bush feed. And um, our vision was really simple, more habitant and sustainable biomass. More habitat is easy because this was the, the main idea that make, make more habitat, make, the, make the, the nature better. And the sustainable biomass is coming from the other hand, that what we should do with the, the bushweed when we, we cut them off. And let's, let's burn it. This was the idea in brief. We decided to, to make a, a local cooperation with, uh, with the municipality, with some local farmers, um, and um, with a, a local biomass power plant. The mechanism was that we cut it off the invasive plants with the help of the public workers of the municipality. We, we sell the, the wood, the biomass, to an external buyer, uh, a local biomass power plant, which paid for it. With this money, we made new biomass plantations, not in the whole area, but there were some areas in the flood plain which were really, really damaged, and there were no reason to save them anymore. So we made some biomass plantations to, to, to use them as biomass as well in the future. And with the same time, you cannot see here, but here's a, a title or, or some words, saving the natural environment. This was the main goal. Here's uh, uh, some aerial pictures of uh, a pilot area. This is a, a picture before the blue indicating the, uh, the invasive plants, the areas with, uh, infected with, by uh, um, invasive plants. This is the before phase and after. We cleaned the area and um, we made a new grazing area because grazing is a traditional farming for floodplains, and grazing is a, is a non-destructive um, farming. If you graze an area, it can keep its natural and uh, conservation value. And uh, also grazing can keep the area from the bush feed to grow again. And on the other side of the area, which was uh, fields before, we made an uh, energy plantation. Here are two photos. We on traditional floodplain farming was made on, on high value natural areas. And here you can see some water buffaloes eating the high value nature. And on the other hand, on, on former field areas, which was not so in, in good condition and not worth to, to, to save or to use as grazing land, we made energy plantations. What was the results? Hmm? Yeah, okay. First of all, we cleaned an area from an invasive plant and uh, rehabilitated it. Um, we, we reintroduced grazing as a traditional farming system for these areas, which cannot affect the, the natural capital of this area. And in the same time, we, we made some uh, biomass plantations that, that can make money for the local community. Additionally, this whole project made jobs. We needed 40, 50 people to handle the area, to cut off the, the, the bush, to, to transport the, the biomass. So and in this area, one job means uh, a living of a family. So it's much more people than 40 and 50. And um, additionally, due that we, we rehabilitated the, the, the environment and we, and we made, made uh, we bring some water buffaloes and we also made uh, 
a gray cattle herd, we, we give a chance to the, the village that, that do something in ecotourism because this area is beautiful, just, just in really bad condition. And uh, we also try to help with our, uh, our job that um, we choose Tisatarian one for one location of our beaver relocation program. So we, we, lived, we left out some uh, beavers here and we, we brought some people to see it. And um, for just not to tell the, the direct effects, with this program, we, we created sustainable energy because biomass is not fossil fuel. And if you, in, in the power plant, they used biomass to produce electricity. So we created green electricity. We also created the flood plan, prom, flood, flood plan, plan for Tisatarian. And with the cleaning of the area, we also have the flood safety. And, um, and <clears throat> yeah, these are the main. Mm, let's see. And what are the lessons? Because I think this is the more, most important thing in the, in the whole speech. That, first of all, money is really important. It's a, it was a pilot project, and to make a, a pilot project, it's, it's really, really expensive. Not just, not just the plans, not just uh, to, to make new ideas, but, but, but it's a, to create a whole new systems takes much time, takes much work, and this is why it takes money. But money is not, not enough. I wish to say that it was hard to find a poor village in Hungary, but uh, it's not true. There are hundreds of towns like this along the Tisza. And we, we, we contacted many of them. And it was really hard to find an open-minded municipality and an open-minded major who wanted to change. And you cannot help somebody who don't want to dare try something new. And uh, the business model. I think this is the most important. If you cannot do something that is financing itself, it will collapse. Maybe not after a year, maybe not after two, but when you leave the area, when you leave the topic and find another one, because this is your job to find new and new problems, they will not handle these problems anymore. But if you, if you can find uh, a model which can which can uh, finance itself, it can be work for many years. And yet, this many years is, I mean really many years. We, we started this project 10 years ago, and it's not yet finished. So if you want to make real change in a society, it takes many, many time. But, and this is the good news, it's possible. You can make change. You can make change that help people and also help the environment. And it's not, it's not opposing. And I think it's, it is the most important that these things are not opposing. And because it, you, you can help people to, 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 to fish their own fish, you don't have to feed them. And uh, of course, first of you have to, first time you have to feed them, but, but after some time, you can find out a system with your expertise, and uh, with this system, these people can, can fish their own food. They can make their own money. And if they, they can make money from a system that helps the environment, you don't need to be there, because somebody will do that instead of you. Thank you very much for your kind attention. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask me. Thank you.